What about the Lightning Network off grid? Is it possible? Yeah, it, it's possible. We we actually um, have a guy uh, working with us this summer who's who's got that as their as their project, and probably in the next few weeks, hopefully, we'll announce some sort of very early version of that uh, using something called loop in. So it's not it's not strictly communicating with Lightning over the mesh, but it's it's a it's just an example of how an off grid computer uh, or an off grid Bitcoin node could actually participate with the with, with the Lightning Network. Um, kind of from a high level, you can I can describe what we're doing. It, we're sort of attacking the problem of of using Lightning payments to incentivize people to use mesh networks, but from two directions. So one direction is to take Bitcoin as it as it is now. Um, the first project we did was this project called TX Tenna, and what that did in a very simple way was it it you took um, so you have a mobile phone that was that is not connected to the internet, but it's running a mobile Bitcoin wallet. Um, and this was actually uh, a tool created by the Samurai uh, Samurai Wallet guys. Um, but so they they um, built they were already building tools to allow for alternative communication um, systems for um, sending Bitcoin transactions. So they they had a, a way to do it over like a ham radio off a of SMS. Um, they even had uh, ideas for like sort of message in a bottle almost ways of, of sending Bitcoin transactions. <laughs> uh, great stuff. So um, so we, we worked with them to adapt what they had done, um, what they call mule, their mule tools project. We worked with them to adapt that um, to allow you to send um, over the mesh network, over the GoTenna mesh device. So that was called TX Tenna. Um, and then the next version of that, so that was on a mobile phone. And the next version of that was, in the, uh, was to take the same protocol, um, but instead of running it over a mobile phone, have it run on a single board or any sort of PC with a USB port. So you can take the GoTenna radio, plug it into a USB port, and do the same thing. So this was called mm. TX Tenna Python. Uh, and that, that has some, some interesting, you know, for one thing, it's a little easier to develop on a, on a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi or something. That's, that's what you can think of. So very low power usage, very low cost. Um, and you just plug in a Gotenna to um, be able to now send Bitcoin transactions over the mesh. Hmm. Well, um, so, based, so based on that framework, we thought, hmm, you know, if you're really thinking about an off-grid system, an off-grid system, so a mobile phone is not going to be a full load. It, it could be running a wallet, but it, it's some projects, but it's, it's a little more difficult to run a full node. Um, but what if, what if you really want to run a Bitcoin full node, be a sort of a sovereign node on the, on the, on the network? Um, so going back to what Blockstream had done, they have this satellite system. So what we, what we did is we worked with Blockstream um, and um, they basically were able to, uh, we were able to integrate this TX10 project so that you could connect your TX10, your off-grid TX10 um, Python node to a Blockstream, BlockSat enabled Bitcoin node, which means that wow. what that really means is that your your yeah, so your off-grid node is now receiving block information, so it's able to basically confirm transactions um, without having any internet connection at, at all. And what the mesh allows you to do is not just receive. So by by receiving blockchain information, that means you can confirm payments. That's essentially what it means. So now, if somebody sent you a transaction, you you're going to receive the blockchain and know that it that it's sort of money good. But what you couldn't do with that system is send a transaction without somehow getting on the internet. Um, well, that's where that's where TX10 of Python came in. Because now, if you were on a mesh network over the mesh, you could send your Bitcoin transaction. And it would hop from node to node to node until it got to some wired internet, you know, somebody with internet, um, and then, and then that could then get relayed onto the internet. So, so that was a cool project. We we announced that just in May actually uh, at the MCCC, the Magical Crypto Conference here in New York. Um, and that, yeah, so that that, you know, that was a that was getting us closer to what we're after. Um, but 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 there was sort of one more step there. I'm just sort of taking you in our evolution. Sure, sure. Um, so the next step, uh, and this this is a this is especially cool for your your listeners who really want to maintain an off grid presence. Um, not only can you receive blockchain data 
from a satellite from the block sat from the blockstream block sat but they also have this thing called the API data interface so what that means is anybody on the internet can send a message through the blockstream satellite on a separate channel and it goes to the whole world and um, what's more they allow you to pay for that with the lightning network so you can pay for that sending of a message completely anonymously wow and it's rather cheap if i remember right um, so anybody can connect you know connect over tor if you want and pay with the lightning network and just send a random message and, and apparently there are people out there um, sending news just news just summarizing the news for different areas and anonymously sending that all over the world and so that and so that what that means is anybody with a a low-cost computer and a hundred dollars worth of equipment for the satellite receiver can totally, in an uncensored way, receive um, yeah, receive outside information. Wow, um, which is great. Yeah. So that's you know, so that's that's starting to get closer to what we're after on a mesh network. So you can see this now. You're seeing somebody paying with the Lightning network in order to communicate. This would be sort of like communicating over those long hops. If you wanted to communicate something over the ocean, over the mountains, connecting net mesh networks, um, the BlockSat, you know, that's definitely one way to do it. That would be that would be an interesting approach. Um, so, but we asked ourselves, there's, there's sort of a piece missing. Our our hypothetical like off grid system that's receiving blockchain information and API data can use the mesh to broadcast at their community, um, but what we really want to do is you, we would really also like to be able to send information the other direct uh, to send out information from your off-grid network and that's um, that's what will is working on this summer is being able to pay a lightning invoice so that your block sat message that you want to send to the world can be paid for with your off-grid network using light using lightning <clears throat> so hopefully hopefully at the end of the summer we'll have uh, sort of the beginning of that and then we'll probably evolve that over the next few months to be a full uh, not just a uh, a loop-in system, but an actual full, what they would call HTLC type communication uh, with the Lightning Network. Right. Um, yeah. So that's so that's coming from the Bitcoin side of things, and then, um, and and where we're we're trying to evolve that is is just using this. This is just using the current Lightning Network and the current existing mesh technology to enable this ecosystem of sending both Bitcoin on chain, but also Lightning payment. Uh, payment channel communication, you know, over the mesh network, and this is this is all possible because both Bitcoin transactions and these um, Lightning channel updates are are pretty small. I mean, we're talking about maybe three or four, or, or perhaps even less um, SMS messages. It's something like that. You know, it's maybe a thousand bytes at most. Um, for for we, we believe we can do it like that. I mean, the, the, it's a little bit different than the current. Um, Lightning Network, if you were a full node on the Lightning Network, you have a lot of gossip messages and there's a lot of other information that we wouldn't we wouldn't be part of that. Uh, but for just the straight payment part of it, not the network maintenance part of it, you can do it quite in a quite like bandwidth economical way. Um, and, and it's a, a good way to show off both sort of how how data efficient Bitcoin is as well as how that meshes well with a very low bandwidth uh, mesh, long range mesh network. Um, but then uh, I was going to say the other part of the project is um, just like you can incentivize uh, the block set to send your API data all over the world, um, we would like to be able to, do, in a similar way, incentivize mesh nodes to also relay data for people within range, um, which is so that that's our incentivization protocol. And that's uh, what we call lot 49, uh, which is a. Uh, Sort of a project. We have a white paper out there, um, but it's essentially just describing ways to take the Lightning protocol and um, make it more, even more data efficient than it is now, so that we can get even squeeze even more data into these updates. And that again, it's just building. It's really not a. It's not a different Lightning network. It's not a different token or anything like that. It's 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 a Lightning network node. But we're the nice thing about the Lightning network um, as a layer two network. You've got a lot more. Um, leverage for nodes, they don't all have to necessarily speak the same wire protocol to be able to communicate value between themselves. So what Lot 49 is, is just a different 
in the lightning terms, it'd be like a different field. So instead of communicating over the internet with high bandwidth, they can communicate over the mesh network. And, and what, so one of your links in the lightning network can be a mesh node or two mesh nodes communicating. And, they, and if those two are, you know, if, the, if at either end of your mesh communication, you might get back on the internet, your, your uh, message can continue to then travel through the traditional, I guess, first realm internet. So technologies yeah, so just feed off each other. Idea. Yeah, hmm. I, awesome. I think so. And I, I think it's worth mentioning too that why this why this is, works in Bitcoin is because Bitcoin has this real focus for um, minimal minimal um, requirements of um, uh, bandwidth, hardware usage. You know, it's it's not a it's a system that recognizes that for a technology to be decentralized its resource usage also has to be minimal. And that, that plays well with mesh, which has some of these same constraints as far as minimal bandwidth, minimal power usage, um, and just trying, you know, to be as distributed as possible, everybody should be able to run a node. So um, there's actually a, there's another team working on a, a related project um, doing sort of what we're trying to do with, with Lot 49, but they're doing it over a different radio technology and they're doing it in Venezuela on very low cost, uh, the low raw radios. So in, in, our, in our mind, this, these technologies can basically all talk together. Um, you know, they'll all basically be speaking the same, same value transfer protocol, which would be lightning. Um, and then, you know, you pick the radio, you, whether it's satellite communication or mesh, mesh radio communication or, or um, even high frequency radio, you know, which is even lower bandwidth than mesh radio. These things can all can they can all talk together. I mean, they they can't talk over the same radio, but they can all um, be part of the same network. And what ties them together is that they're all receiving their incentives sort of in the same unit, which is uh, which is Bitcoin. Sure. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully that gives you some idea of the the grand vision of of how we go from these sort of local networks to more of a, a global network of uh, of meshed devices and people.